Hey everybody, my name is Moshe Ogeg. My Korean name is Hu Seng. Hu Song, they told me today. First of all, I want to congratulate you on the big win yesterday against Germany. So congratulations to South Korea and good luck in the World Cup. I want to talk to you about problems. So one of the main things we do as human beings is solving problems. There's small problems and there's big problems. F of the solution is first understanding the problem. If you understand the problem, then you can really solve it. But in order to understand it, you need to understand the root for the problem. There's too many things in our world that we take for granted. For example, this light. I know that if it's here, you can see me. If it's not here, you can't see me. How exactly does it work? I don't actually know. Another phenomena like that is this interesting paper, which is money. All of us are using it every day. We're taking it for granted. We don't really understand and know what gives this piece of paper in the green color with a certain signature the underlying value. And it's very interesting because the cost of production of this bill and a lower bill, let's say 500 or 50, it's the same cost. Only the either one or five or zeros determines the underlying value. So first I want to take a few minutes to explain how it works and explain why I, why I think that Jamie Dimon, when he says that Bitcoin and cryptocurrencies has no underlying value, why he gets it all wrong. So what gives this piece of paper I showed you before underlying value is actually consensus. Exactly what gives Bitcoin the underlying value. It, people think that America is in the basement, in the bunkers, they have big piles of gold, a lot of gold. And this gold is backing the underlying value of the printed money. But there's two problems with that. First problem is that it's not true. Gold is not backing dollars anymore. Second problem is, let's say that gold does back money. Who gives gold an underlying value? Gold market cap is $7 trillion. $7 trillion. The entire cryptocurrency market is $250 billion. And gold alone is seven trillion, just to understand the difference. What is the use for gold? 90% of the use for gold is backing value, credit between central banks in the world. 10% of the use of gold is jewelry, most of it in India. So only 10% is actually being utilized. And what is the utilization? The utilization is jewelry. Jewelry is fashion. Someone convinced us that the color of gold is a beautiful color. But fashion can change. What if someone tomorrow decides that gold is not beautiful anymore and silver now is beautiful? It can decrease the value. It should decrease the value of gold. What if something else happens? What if we take diamonds? When I ask people what is the number one marketing in the world, they like to say Apple or Nike. In my opinion, the best marketing company in the world is diamonds. Why? It's a stone. It's not rare. It's not rare at all. You can produce in the lab synthetically. But somehow, they convinced every woman in the world, if you don't have a diamond, you're not a woman. And if you don't buy her a diamond, you don't love her. If you want to prove that you love her, you need to get her a diamond. This is psychology. Psychology and consensus brings diamond value, underlying value. Consensus gives gold underlying value. And consensus gives Bitcoin underlying value. It's all the same. 
It's worth something because we believe it's worth something. But Bitcoin and cryptocurrencies has a big advantage over gold and diamonds. Diamonds, someone can produce, as I said before, he can produce it in the lab. What if tomorrow this gentleman over here digs and finds a lot of gold? He can decrease the value of gold. What if this gentleman over here is a brilliant scientist and he can produce for the first time gold in the lab? It will reduce the value of gold. What you cannot do is print bitcoins under the miners. Yes? Let's say there's a total amount, 21 million is being mined. This is it. No one can develop more bitcoin in the lab. No one can find Bitcoin in the, in the land. It will never work like this. So if governments actually want a better rare mechanism, rarity mechanism, cryptographics is the best one. So I'm very passionate about blockchain. And the reasons are two. One is just what I said now, the mathematics, the cryptography, the rareness factor. The second thing, this is the only asset in the world, the only asset that you really own. Cars, money, real estate, all of these governments can take away like that. Money is a controlling tool, and it's been, been like that for hundreds of years. Government control citizens through money, through assets. And they can say that the car is no longer yours, the money is no longer yours, the real estate is no longer yours. The only thing that no one can take away from you is cryptocurrencies. So I'm excited about it. For me, it's freedom. But if I'm so excited about it, and I'm putting so much time and money into this field, how come all of the people that over here are the super minority in the world? Why the people outside don't understand what we understand and want to follow us and join the revolution. I think there's one major problem, user experience. The user experience of blockchain is, excuse my language, is shit. Terrible, catastrophe. The people in the street, they don't care about how the technology works. They need to get, to get value for them and they need it to be in an easy way. Those long private keys, all of those hacks, the fact that when I need to do a wire transaction, first I need to send a test, 0.01 ether, approved, okay, now I can send the balance. Imagine the, the equivalent in the normal world. Let's say I wanna wire you through the bank, $100,000, would I first wire you $1 before? Make sure, oh, did you got the dollar? Okay, now I call my bank, I'll wire you the, the rest. It doesn't work like that. We need to fix the user experience. People talk about the scalability. But I say if we don't fix the user experience, we don't need to fix the scalability. First, let's fix the user experience. Then scalability will become an issue and we need to solve that. So, my company, Searing Labs, is trying to tackle the user experience. There's two big problems with user experience. One is a current problem with the wallets, the security of the wallets, and the easiness to use, the simplicity of those wallets. Second problem is every company is doing an ICO, there's hundreds of companies, maybe even thousands of companies that are doing an ICO, and each one of them have their own token. This is a bit crazy. Why it's a bit crazy? Because in the end, when they finish to develop their software and they give it to the people to use, imagine the user experience again. If you play this game, you need this token. If you use this app, this token doesn't work. You need to change to this token. You want to use Uber, you need a different token. Every app, its own token. Imagine the user experience in the real life. Instead of using Korean One, imagine that every store you go to, you need a different uh, money. 
The Korean one is not enough. No, for this clothing store, you need this money. For this food restaurant, you need different money. It's crazy. It would never work, never. What we need to do is simple. We need to do conversions in the background. My mother, if, she, if I want her to use blockchain, she shouldn't be an expert. My mother doesn't know what is HTTP, which is the engine behind the... Who cares? My car, when I push the gears, it goes forward. How? I don't care. This is a good user experience. If I need to understand how the engine works, it's a very bad user experience. No one will drive cars if everyone needs to understand. So how do we solve those problems? We're developing a phone right now. This phone, understanding that all of the apps in the end will find themselves either on a computer or a smartphone. There's more smartphone than people in the world. This phone that we're developing is a top-notch phone in every aspect, in the processor, the screen, the cameras, everything. But the security is up there. Our company, Sirin Labs, if you Google it, you will find it's producer of the number one secure phone in the world, the Solarin. This is a phone that we already developed two years ago. It's a very expensive phone. This one, the blockchain phone, won't be that expensive. This phone will cost less than $1,000. What it will have inside it, other than being a very good phone, in the level of Galaxy and iPhone X, the key features would be, sorry, I'll get to messy in a second. The key features will be the crypto wallet that is called storage. If you saw before, I'll go before again, sorry. One. Sorry, one, two. If you see in the top of the phone, there's a slider. It comes up and down. When it's down, it's in cold storage. No hacker can hack the phone because the, it's just like Ledger and Trezor. It's cold storage. When you want to connect it, you slide it up. You see your wallets, it connects. So it's more secure, much more secure. The second thing we have is the token conversion service. Every app that wants to be on our phone, on our DAP store, needs to... Uh, 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 needs to compliance with our protocols and enable users to use different apps when we will convert the balances of the tokens from an app to an app. So for example, if you went to Bittrex or Binance and you bought one token of one app that you're using, let's say Uber have their own token. So you're using Uber, but then you want to use Airbnb you don't need to go to Bittrex again and buy a different token. You do nothing. You only open the app, and we automatically, in the background, take the Uber tokens, convert them into Airbnb tokens, and let you work seamlessly. So cold storage, super secure wallet, and the ability to convert tokens. Between those two slides, as I showed before, and I will wrap up with this because my time is finishes. We have this guy. So we want to approach mass market. In order to approach mass market, we signed, the, uh, in my opinion, the best player in the world, Lionel Messi. World known name. He has very strong Facebook, Instagram, and a lot of followers. And we use him as a brand ambassador. He's, he's done a commercial for us, which we're going to release in the end of the year, talking about hodling. It's a very nice commercial. And he's going to do an event and promote it to the mass market audience. If we want this entire industry to jump from where it is right now to the next stage, we need to fix the user experience and bring the mass market users. Thank you very much.